Let's go ahead and jump right into PowerPoint basics. So the first thing that we need to understand real quickly about PowerPoint is that you can get this through the Microsoft 365 site, or you can buy a perpetual license to download what's called Office 2021. Now, a lot of the Microsoft Office subscriptions also come with the ability to download. But let's go ahead and start PowerPoint. So as you can see, I'm gonna use the downloaded version. I like to refer to it as Office 2021 uh, to separate it from the online version. I've got videos on that as well. So we'll open up PowerPoint. And the first thing we wanna do is create a blank PowerPoint. So we have a lot of themes. We'll talk about themes and downloading themes later, but right now we're just gonna start with a blank PowerPoint. So we click this button right here and it opens up a PowerPoint with one slide and that is a title slide. Okay, so at this point, since this is really basic, we want to select and change a document theme. So the way we would do that is come up to design, and we have some base themes that are built in to our version of Office. So I'm going to go ahead for this video and choose the Ion theme by simply mousing over it, clicking one time to select it. You'll notice that a lot of these themes also have variants, and the variants just changes the colors and styles of this base theme. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the blue variant of the ion theme. So this would be the blue ion theme. Next, let's create a title slide. We do that and notice we have a title slide here, so we don't need to put one in. Should we want a new title slide for some reason, we can just come into insert, new slides, and pick title slide. So I'll do that real quick. You'll notice now I have two title slides. I'm gonna go ahead and delete one of those by simply right clicking and deleting the slide. So let's fill out this default title slide. We're gonna say this is my title. And then a subtitle of this might be Learning PowerPoint Office 2021. And I'm gonna put Microsoft 365 in there as well. So at this point, uh, we've entered the text for that. Let's go ahead and create a new slide with a bulleted list. So I'm going to come up to new slide. In this case, I'm going to select one that is blank. And we're going to go ahead and put in a bulleted list. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert a text box that we can play with. So I'm going to choose insert text box. You'll notice my cursor changes and I've got a text box that I can play with. So from here, I'm gonna come in here. Here are the bullets that I wanna start my list with. But first, before I do a bulleted list, I'm gonna say this is a bulleted list. And in fact, let's go ahead and rename this multi-level bulleted list. So this is my title. This is not part of my list. I'm gonna hit the Enter key. I'm gonna come down twice. And now I'm gonna pick just the default bullets. You'll notice I can mouse over. There's different bullet options uh, that can be created. Plus I can create custom bullets. I'll have a video on that as well. I'm gonna pick the default bullet there. So if you notice the bullet coloring goes with my theme and I'm gonna say this is gonna be item one. I'm gonna tab. I'm gonna do item two. I'm gonna do item three and then I'm gonna do item four. So this gives me a default bulleted list. Now to make this a multi-leveled list, what I would wanna do is enter to create a sub bullet and then I hit the tab key. You'll notice that bullet mo moves over to another level. So then I can say that this is item one A and then finally this is item one B. So let's look at adding slides. By default, there are a bunch of slide types under the Insert tab, New Slide. You'll find many types of slides that can be added. A title slide, title and content, section header, to content, comparison, you name it. We're gonna start with this title and content slide. And in this slide, you'll notice that we have this content area where we can add things simply by clicking this. What I'm gonna do is go back over to our list here. I'm gonna copy this list out of this text box. 
come in here and simply paste it in here. So you'll notice with a, with a content box, we get a little bit different format that we can play with. From here, let's say that I've created this and I realize I want to compare this list with another list. I can actually change the slide layout. To do that, I'll go to the Home tab, under the Slides section, Layout, and I'm going to change this to Comparison. You'll see by doing that, it keeps my content that I have here and adds another text box sequence so that I can compare. Let's go ahead and change that one more time. So from Layout, this time I'm just going to pick Picture with Caption. And you'll notice that my content has changed, but it goes to the format of the slide. So now I can change this. I can move things around within the slide. These are just basic starter templates to give us places to import information. Now let's stick with our small bulleted list and talk about changing font size and color. As we can see, this list is way small it's going to be hard to read. I'm going to highlight the entire list, come to my font sizes. I'm going to pick a different font, and then I'm going to increase the size of that content. So as you can see, by increasing that size, I'm going to make that bigger. I've now changed the font style and changed the size. I want to get this title to stick out, so I'm going to go ahead and change the color. Now the theme is based on my design, so if I pick a different design, pick a different variant, I'm going to get different colors within my color palette. I'm going to go ahead and pick that color, and matter of fact, I'll pick a little brighter color so it contrasts well there. I can come in here, change this to a different color. Maybe what I want to do is use some orange, for example, for item one. I'll use this orange here. And then for these two items, notice I'm just selecting them and then picking the color that I want. We'll do an item two for a different color. And now we have changed color of items. Let's go ahead and bold, italicize, and underline text. So I've gone back to slide number two. I've made the text bigger so that you can see it. Matter of fact, I'll make it even bigger. So again, I'm going to just increase the size of the font. There we are. And let's go ahead and work with our list. So to bold this, I'm going to highlight the content that I want to bold. I've got two options. I can hit the Control B on my keyboard or come up here and hit bold. So there's bold. Let's go ahead and italicize some font. I'm going to highlight the font. I can do a Control I or I can come up here and choose italicize. Finally, let's go ahead and underline. We'll spend just a couple more minutes on underlining. Here, if you notice, if, as I highlight, I've got a quick launch bar that I could use to do things. There's underline right there. So I could just do the default underline. I can choose Control U on the keyboard, or I can come up here and underline. Many, many ways to do things in PowerPoint. Exploring underline just a little bit more. What I'm going to do is normally, like in Word, I have a drop down menu there. If I don't have a drop down menu, it doesn't mean those features and functionalities don't exist. I'm going to hit this arrow for more in the bottom. Here is underline. I'm going to change the font color for my underline. I'm going to change the style of underline. And then I can change the underline color as well. So notice I've got font color, underline, etc. I'll hit OK. And now you can see my font color was changed, my underline style was changed, and the underline color. Next, let's look at inserting pictures into slides. I'm going to need a new slide to do this. So from the Home tab or from Insert, I can do New Slide. I'm going to go ahead and pick a title and content. And I'm going to move this down just so it's my fourth slide. Now, if you notice, to insert pictures, I can do this either with a content placeholder or without. To insert a picture with a content placeholder right here, I can pick the picture I want. There's stock images or pictures. I'm going to go ahead this time and pick stock images. I'm going to wait for that to come up. And now I'm going to type 
what kind of stock image I'm looking for. So I'm going to look for a kitty stock image. I'm going to grab, oh, this one looks kind of cute here, and I'm going to insert it into my slide. So if you'll notice as it downloads this, it's going to insert it to the size of my content placeholder. So that's one way to do it. Let me go ahead and copy this one real quick. Actually, I'll just do new slide. I'll do title and content, but this time let's not use the content area. I'm going to be on this slide. I'm going to come up to insert. Okay. Then I have pictures here and I can do from this device, stock images or online. This time let's do online pictures. This will give me more variants here. We'll again stick with the cat theme and we'll click here. This will open up the online cat images that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and pick this little kitten here and notice now I'll insert. So this is not going to necessarily, it will insert into the content area. You know, I can certainly be out of a content area here, do the same thing, insert, let's do it again, insert pictures. This time we'll do stock images. This time let's go ahead and do icons. We'll just find an icon that we want to use. Let's use that icon there and we'll insert up oh, and we'll insert that in. So there's the icon. I can now move it around, change its color, do things to make it suit my presentation. Let's go back to slide number four and we'll talk about resizing and moving this image. So to move the image, all I have to do is select the graphic. You'll notice that I have four, uh, a four arrowed cursor, and then I can just move this to wherever I want. So let's say I wanted to align that there. I can also resize the image. You'll notice that there's these resizing corners. I can keep it to an aspect ratio by choosing one of the corners to resize, or I can resize vertically and I can resize, or actually resize horizontally, and now resize vertically. Finally, let's go ahead and crop this image because I just want the image of the cat. I don't want this. So to crop the image, I'm gonna select the image. I'm gonna go up to picture format and utilize the cropping tool. So I'm gonna crop this image. You'll notice that my cursor opportunities change here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down. On this side, I'm even going to cut it down on this side, and I'm going to cut it down on that side. So now, once I do that, I hit the Enter key, or I can hit the Crop key, and I have a new cropped image. Now, in another video, we will talk about how to remove the background from an image should we want to do that. Let's move on to arranging slides. So now we have five slides in our presentation here. Let's say I want to move this slide up. I'm going to grab this slide, left click and hold as I drag it into position. Let's say I want this bulleted list as the last slide. I'm going to left click and hold and drag it into position. Now we have this theme color, but let's say once we start putting in pictures, we start looking at colors, we want to change that theme color. I'm going to go into design. I'm going to change this to the purple ion theme. So I can change that theme color to purple. I can change it to orange. I can even change it back to the original ion theme. Just by clicking that, my entire presentation changes. Finally, we always want to make sure that we are checking our spelling and our grammar. And I've made a change here and a change here. So from here, I'm going to go into review. I'm going to choose spelling. It's going to go through and find errors. You'll notice it found PowerPoint should be PowerPoint. So I'm going to change that or I could choose to ignore that. Here is that mistake made in the title and I can change that. So spelling is complete now. That's one way to check the spelling. Also, you'll notice that there were indicators as I created the slide that created a red squiggly line. That means I need to look at this, that Microsoft thinks there might be a problem with the spelling or grammar of that section. Let's review our presentation in different views. So from here on the Home tab, different views, I'm going to go to the View tab. 
and I can look at normal view. I can choose outline view, slide sorter view, notes page view. This is great if we're going to print this and give people the opportunity to take notes. Or we can look at reading view. To get out of reading view, what we can do is either come down here and pick another view or just hit the escape key. That'll take us back to the original uh, outline view. And then I can go to the normal view, which is what I normally use. When giving a presentation or just providing a presentation where you have additional information that doesn't necessarily exist on the slide, things you want to remind yourself of, we have this button right down here for notes. So if it's not turned on, I can click notes and now I can add notes. Detailing information that I want to include in a note section for a slide. Finally, we need to save our presentation. Now I want to provide for you a best practice, which is if I was going to start a PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to choose blank presentation, just like we did. And the first thing I'm going to do is file, save as, and then save the presentation either on my computer, on my OneDrive, whatever. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick this PC. I'm going to choose more options. I like to be in this traditional save. I'm going to choose the desktop. I'm going to call this uh, presentation two and save it. Now, also in saving doc, uh, PowerPoint presentations, we have different versions we can save as. You'll notice by default, it is going to save as a PowerPoint presentation. But if we choose this drop down menu, we can see macro enabled presentation. That's going to be a presentation that has some automated code or a macro that does something when we run the presentation. If we know we're sending it to someone who doesn't have the current version, but has an older version of Microsoft, we might want to save it here. That way we can see what features and functionalities will show up on the presentation. Many times we want to save it as a common PDF so that it cannot be edited as we send it out. And then as you can see, all of these other options in which to save a PowerPoint presentation. Finally, let's go ahead and print the presentation. There are still times that we want to print a presentation. Normally, if I'm going to print a presentation, I am going to do it in the notes page view so that people can handwrite notes as they listen to my presentation. So from here, I'm going to go to file. I'm going to choose print. You'll notice that it comes up in this view. I'm printing the slides. I'm going to choose the printer that I want to print to. I can choose what portion of the presentation that I want to print, all slides, print current slides, pick a range. So if I have a big presentation, I only want to print certain slides, I can do that as well. Full slides, so if you notice when I chose this, even though I was in notes view, it defaults on full slides. I can then do notes pages, I can do an outline, and choose different features and functionalities to print. Notice I can have multiple slides and print those as well if I don't need to print them in full size. That's it for our PowerPoint basics. I hope to see you back for next level PowerPoint or PowerPoint level two.